This is my first game at Hastings for 22 years. It was in 1953-54 that I had lost a historic game to Conal Hugh O'Donnell Alexander in 120 moves. As I started to play, my main aim was to try to forget how old I was. I was glad to find myself paired in the first round against a very pleasant young man, as he still is, who had won the World Junior Championship in 1967. David Bronstein. Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you that same game mentioned above where in the first round of 1975-76 Hastings tournament legendary Soviet chess grandmaster David Bronstein faced Puerto Rican chess player Julio Kaplan. At the time of the game Bronstein was 51 years old, as old as Anand. And Bronstein has nothing to complain, you know, because nowadays at the age of 51 Anand is really giving tough lessons to the youngsters. And anyways, without further ado, now let's proceed with the game. In this game, Kaplan had white pieces and he opened up with e4, to which Bronstein answered with e6. The good old French defense is on the board. Knight f6, bishop g5, and d takes e4. Burn variation is on the board. Knight takes e4, bishop e7, and after bishop takes f6, we see g takes f6. Bishop takes f6 is an alternative, but this is also a popular line with which black pawns are having control over the center. And later, in some cases, black can even put his rook on the semi open g file and put pressure down that file. Uh, knight f3 by Kaplan, knight d7. A modern theory recommends f5 and then a6, b5, bishop b7. Uh, also, b6 is popular, but in the game we see a slightly offbeat line starting with knight d7, queen d2, c5. Well, not a good move, because by going for d5, white can create too many problems for black. In the pre-computer era, this move had also been seen in a game played between Judith Polgar and Nigel Short. That happened in 1999. Here comes d5 by Kaplan, which is an absolutely precise move f5 and d takes e6. Already this is an inaccuracy and I have to tell you that by playing knight g3 white could create too many problems for black. Once I finish the main game I will turn on stockfish and we will take a closer look what's going on. So in the game we see d takes e6, f takes e4 and in return white won black knight. And this line actually doesn't give white much, in this case we have an equality. Black castled king side, which is absolutely legal by the way. Knight goes back on d2, blocking the d file in order to castle queen side, queen f5, hitting on f2. White castled queen side, queen takes f2, and in return, white won black pawn, uh, which is a mistake. Yeah, this is a serious mistake. It was better to play bishop c4, if bishop f6, then queen b3. But instead, a white horrid to win back a pawn, and now let's see what's the problem with it. Here comes queen f4 check. And now, yeah, you are forced to play knight d2 in order to save a piece, and thus you are stepping into a very ugly pin, and relying on that fact, Bronstein will win the game. Here comes bishop g4, hitting on the rook, rook e1, and there comes bishop g5, intensifying the pin. Bishop d3 rook a e8, rook f1, because already black wanted to go for the exchange of rooks and then play a move like queen f2. In the game we see rook f1 and queen e3, h3, bishop e2, rook f5. Uh, well, if bishop takes e2, then queen takes c3, and then rook takes e2, and then rook d8, it's over. In the game we see rook f5, and bishop goes back on h6. Bronstein writes, such a lovely bishop. If there had been a few even safer squares further back along the diagonal, I would have retreated him still further. Bishop takes e2, queen takes c3. At this point, Bronstein had half an hour left for 18 moves, and Kaplan only had a minute on his clock. Uh, Bronstein writes, I think he saw what was coming, but wanted it demonstrated. B takes c3, rook takes e2. With rook d5, white neutralized the threat, at the same time 
keeping an eye on DH, not allowing Black Rook to step into the game, but in here Braunstein landed another punch. Can you find his next move? Ready? Rook takes d2, I'm sure you found this. This exchange sacrifice enables the last piece to join the attack as well. Rook d1 and after c4 black forced a resignation. With this move black is totally paralyzing white's position, not allowing with c4, c3, king c2 break up the pin and soon white will be out of pawn moves, you know after which white will find himself in Tsuktsavank. At this point Kaplan resigned, but let's take a look at one of the possible lines. For example, if g4, which is actually a very venomous move, you know, g5 is the threat in order to... Uh, in order to invite black bishop to step on the g file and play rook g1. But uh, black can play bishop f4 and already there are no more threats. If a3 then king g7, if a4, oh okay, you can just make waiting moves. If here then again king g7, if h5, let's play a5. If g5, which is another conning move, of course you should not play bishop takes g5 because of this rook g1. That's why after g5 already... Well, instead of making a waiting move, already you can go for a simplification, you know? And then bishop takes g5, bishop takes d2. The pawn and the game is hopeless for white. Yes, that's why after this staggering, quiet c4 move, white resigned. A very, very nice game by Braunstein, where with a deadly pin he finished up his opponent. Uh, what I want to do right now is to go back and see what's wrong with this c5 move. So white can play d5. And now if f5, which we see in our game, then instead of d takes e6, then knight g3. Uh, after which uh, black is actually finding himself in trouble. If, for example, knight f6, a move suggested by engine, then white can castle queenside. Of course, this is a very complex line, but, uh, you know, in his preparation one can have this line. Now if e takes d5, then bishop b5 check, and then knight takes f5. If bishop takes b5, then rook e1, a very nice line of course, and then queen f4. The threat is rook takes e4. And this is how white can win the game, you know? What are you going to play? It's difficult to give black an advice, yeah. This is a totally winning position. Uh, instead in the game we saw d takes e6, which allowed black to equalize the game. Uh, well, this is it, dear chess lovers. I uh, hope that you enjoyed the game. Feel free to share with your friends as well. And in the end, let's also solve a chess puzzle. Please take a look at the position and try to find the winning line for white. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.